everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Google Cloud Next here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier, also Rob Strecce and Savannah Peterson yeah. on with us. Um, this is just been a great conference. We're nearing the end of day two, and one of the things that is just so striking are these partnerships and the strategic yeah. alliances that, that Google Cloud. Yeah, HCL Tech's coming on now. We're going to have a great conversation. And what's really exciting is that they're at the forefront of accelerating solutions and they're unfolding right in front of us. Also, one of the guests has been a CUBE alumni going back to 20, 11. Yes. Okay. Well, let, let, oh, let's gee. introduce her. Let's okay, <laughs> let's go. Go ahead. Siki Gunta, she is the Executive Vice President, Cloud Smart Industry Cloud Consulting, Google Ecosystem Unit at HCL Tech. Thank you so much for yeah. coming on the show. Thank you. And Alan Flower is the EVP and Head of Cloud Native and AI Labs at HCL Tech. Thank you. Lovely both. to join you yeah. today. Yes, and Siki, again, distinguished CUBE yeah. alumni who, yeah. who remembers when it all got started. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was. Tiny, it was a laptop and the camera, and, <laughs> and then and now look at the spread of, yeah, it's, um, it's, of the it's production. Fun. It's fun, I remember we were actually talking about cloud yes. at that time, um, and we were actually talking about some of the same things now, but it's gotten so big, it's now the business model, and I think the AI wave is, is here for sure. We just had a previous guest on from Google who runs all the container stuff, we, 10 years of Kubernetes, okay, yes. so all right, things are moving along. Now, the biggest problem everyone's trying to solve is, What's my solution look like? How does Gemini, in Google's case, AI, yes. impact? How do I infuse that into it? And how can I get it deployed? Mm. As with use cases that are mm. identified. Then there's the, what does it mean in the future? So help us understand where your customers are at right now because as vendors bring stuff to the market, we're seeing a lot of announcements here, customers are in a different spot. Yeah. Especially in the enterprise. Yes, I, we have a great solution with the Cloud Native Lab. We just funnel all our requests to one spot and help us really understand the magic use cases. And now we have a year of, of experience and Alan uh, will give you a lot of really good insight. But we, I think, have decided that the upper layer of um, AI, the industry specific, is the one that, it, that is going to impact the business mm. the most. There are some horizontal uh, use cases we are um, you know, taking to market. The last thing is we have partnered with, with, with Google um, on Gemini, and uh, at, in the floor we got in, you know, manufacturing solutions. Uh, we're looking at telecom and, and life science. These are the area where we have um, got clients that went to see Alan and they want to do it, and <laughs> now we are ready to just prototype and industrialize. Alan, you got the keys to the kingdom. You got the AI labs, all the actions mm. coming to you. What are you seeing? Tell us some stories, give us the update. Well, look, it's quite remarkable, isn't it, really? I think in the space of barely a year, we've seen our clients go from kind of tepid kind of exploration maybe looking at some horizontal use cases, but then rapidly gaining confidence. Maybe they've deployed Gen AI into the software engineering domain, for example. They rapidly get confidence, then they move on to, how is this going to transform my business? So as Siki says, what we've seen in barely a year is yeah. These clients now expecting to do significant business transformation enabled by Gen AI. Is there ever any overconfidence? I mean, as you said, they, they've seen an, some immediate benefits mm. which have inspired them to do more, but, it, but is there ever a time when it's... It's a, it's a good question, isn't it? Because we often joke that ChatGPT, best sales tool the industry has ever yes. developed, right? <laughs> right. And it does, it does give you a lot of confidence most right. of which is justified. Sure, right? sure. So it's done a very good job. A lot of enthusiasm, for sure. Huge amount double, of enthusiasm. Double, double the enthusiasm. Huge amount of enthusiasm. <laughs> and the, so the remarkable thing is, right, we, we've done well over a thousand workshops with clients now around the globe, so we think we've got pretty good insight into what those use cases are. Fundamentally, it's the business leadership yes. that are driving Gen AI. It's not the technology estate. Business leaders very rapidly saw the business uh, you know, potential. Fundamentally, you know, they're thinking about improvements in productivity, quality, velocity, right? That brings a significant impact to their business, hence they're coming to us. They know the use cases, they think they know where they want to deploy Gen AI. They need a partner like HCL Tech to accelerate the journey and build the solution. 
You know, that reminds me of that famous Steve Jobs video where he says, it's not about the technology trying to find a, a, a solution. Yeah. You got to work backwards. Yeah. And I think the recognition that we're seeing is similar, is that people see the bridge to the future, yes. but they got to build it. It's like it's but, not built yet. I'm building on, Rebe <laughs> on Rebecca. It, it, it's a, a double-edged sword, because sometimes people are very confident, and then the build model and these are hallucinating to them straight away. And the problem is that they retrench very fast and they lose credibility with the business. The other big area, is especially for instance in financial services, they need to have things like 99% governance and security mm. in, the, in the right country. So there is a little bit of a hesitation on things that impact uh, private information, money yeah. and, and everything to go, but anything that is process acceleration, like I have to yeah. a, a, do a, a loan applications, mm. that things will, will go fast. Uh, it just, I give my advice is just understand what the business need if I talk to IT, and I, if I talk to business, say just temper your enthusiasm. This is not a, mm. a magic wonder, mm. things happen. So and the data is not there, not all the data is there, and that's a big challenge. So Alan, you got all the use case, thousands of workshops. Mm. Okay, business leaders see it, we got to get to the future, the wave's here, it's a no brainer kind of like the web, it's coming, we got to yeah. get there, start tooling up. What happens next, what's the progression? And what are some of the prerequisites that need to be in place to go to the next uh -huh. level? It's, Take it's, us through a little bit of a it, journey. Well, it's a really there. good question, right? So we've seen this rapid acceleration of client journeys. They've gone from, we've got a good idea, let's build a POC, let's build a minimal viable product, to don't switch it off, <laughs> all right? We see value. Because they like it and it's working. Yeah, it, yes. we've got plenty of examples where we've built, let's call them POCs for clients. Yeah. They asked to experiment maybe for a few weeks, turns out the whole workforce starts using, and then two weeks later the client is saying, don't switch it off, we've got value yeah. already. But the challenge for the industry, quite frankly, is yes. clients are now moving so rapidly, yes. is the industry ready to take these solutions into scaled production? All yes. sorts of challenges. A very good example, of course, is in traditional IT, the way we operate solutions yes. tends to be quite static. We, we sign these things called SLAs, that defines our behavior for the next five years, for example. With Gen AI flavored solutions, it's an organic infrastructure. Someone has to be looking at the accuracy of the solution, the underlying models. Who's going to decide to replace this model with a better one tomorrow? Who's going to make sure that we keep control of the cost of executing some of these models as well. So it's become a very complex landscape <laughs> as we now contemplate what production looks like. It's like the nexus of FinOps meets system engineering, DevOps, SecOps, yes. and then <laughs> IT. And by the way, all rolled into one. This magic person does not <laughs> exist. <laughs> it does not. So you need to have a very coordinated type of skills. Uh, skills that can talk to the business, and we are all chasing the same skills. The cloud provided, our partners, us, and, and, and I think the things that all my clients says, scale means around the globe, is who's going to support it? And how can, I, how can the, the business learn how to use it and be confident in there? And um, I know that everybody thinks that Gen AI is going to take the job of everybody. I say no, we are going to move up the ladder and change our skills to be, to be there because you know, as automation and Gen AI is going to make the business better. It's just we have to change the yeah. workforce and we have to have extremely good governance, I think. So going back to that, I mean, it really will take entirely different kinds of skills, yes, entirely yes. different kinds of analytical mm -hmm. thinking. We are, we've, we've talked a lot on this show at, this, at, at Google Cloud Next about how we're going to see this explosion in creativity because we've reduced the toil mm -hmm. and automating so, much, so many tasks. But you also brought up an excellent point, Alan, which is, is the industry ready for how fast clients oh. want to move? So, so how are you walking through your, your customers through these very well, difficult questions? I take the view that all of us, it doesn't matter which business we work within, there's a growing expectation from clients, stakeholders, peers, managers, leaders, that we now all start to leverage and take advantage 
of this productivity gain. It applies to us as just like any other business, of course. Now, a very good example of where we're taking advantage of that is we've recently launched something called AI Force. Now, AI Force is really HCL Tech taking the lead, taking the industry to the next stage of application of Gen AI. We're all very comfortable, for example, with the use of Gen AI in the software development realm. For many people, the journey starts there, doesn't it? You, yeah. you download a co-pilot. Well, our clients expect us to go well beyond that. We're expected now to use Gen AI to really automate and enhance the entire software development life cycle. So you could look at AI Force, for example, as a change of posture to an AI-led delivery model. Is AI Force a platform or a methodology? Can you explain what it, it is? It is an um, is a IP that we use to deliver our um, transformation, code transformation for clients. And it's a little bit of an end-to-end, -end. you generate code depending on which so model. So it's technology too. Yes. But mm -hmm. it's a, AI is technology, yeah. you, the <laughs> you have to do that, then you test it. There is a good element of, of security because when you auto-generate the code, you could insert a lot of uh, security liability in it, so we yeah. have that, we have a cost model in there. It's used in conjunction with our clients. So it's how you guys yeah. execute your, your delivery. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Okay, and so the clients too. And how do they get involved? Too. Is it part of every engagement or is it, does it have a certain, um, pipeline for criteria? Well, so we, we've already started to deploy it, okay? Yes. So okay. clients are already seeing very significant, uh, significant gains. We ran a session here today, for example, yes. where we actually shared some of the productivity gains. And on some of our projects, we, we've recorded in excess of 60, 70% productivity acceleration through the use of AI4. So we've already convinced ourselves, right? We already have clients using this. But don't forget, of course, that HCL Tech has been building AI-enabled technologies and solutions for over a decade, yeah, right? Yeah. We are the industry's, of course, preferred engineering partners, mm, so yeah. this is a landscape that we know particularly well. So we've just taken the, you know, the opportunity, not just to consume co-pilots off the shelf, anyone can do that, but we've built this entire platform and framework to ensure that we can deliver yeah. engineering projects now with greater productivity, better quality, and of course we can take features to market for our clients awesome. far quicker than ever before. Sika, you do the ecosystem side of HCL Tech as well. With Google, they're very open. We have great stuff, but also we work with other environments. The other clouds, Edge is huge, we mentioned that briefly. As multi-vendors come into the play here, yes. that becomes a big part of maybe Air Force, I mean uh, AI Force and the tooling. What's the ecosystem involvement? What, what is there, um, do you just join? How do you, is it part of the process? Um, or? I, I think, um, you know, Alan and I, yeah. we know that is a multi-cloud, private and- Multimodal, private. multi-cloud. <laughs> it's, a, it's a world that is going yeah. to be like that. At the moment, um, uh, the more disciplined uh, clients pick uh, a platform of choice and they develop models on that, but I can tell you there are models where chat is better than Gemini and that Gemini is strong. It's like, um, you know, the beginning of cloud, yeah. when you had, it's going to be uh, that way. Yeah. And I, f I find that um, the ecosystem partner, they are all, picking their own lanes. And for instance, in, in the case of Google, like everything that we they we get in Gemini 5 is some one five, they've been used internally at, my, at, at Google for a long time, and yeah. now they put it on their strength is search. And obviously Microsoft has a you know a different value proposition, is more uh, you know user friendly and, and, and things like that. We, our job is to Navigate the yeah. clients to get and you the got best. Industry, you got the industries. You got exactly. all the all the all the uh, interactions and engagements. We've been here and love to get your thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you hear the same thing or react to it, we're hearing here on the cube and our other events. Optionality is job one yeah. in this new design because they saw the cloud game. Mm -hmm. If they went, if they over rotated yep. into a cloud even outside of the core compute stuff, the multi high level services, if they didn't actually need them. And AI, stay with the more optional yeah. approach. Yeah. Do you hear the same thing? Yeah, What's your reaction? I think, look, fundamentally, AI is a hybrid multi-cloud right. journey. Yes. You've heard that before, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's exactly the same. Clients expect to be able to run their AI workloads wherever they need to run. And don't forget, AI moves to the data, yeah. not the other way around. So we see interest in on-prem deployments. 
We see interest yeah. in multi-cloud deployments. And some of the announcements, of course, that we heard yesterday play really strongly to this. For example, Google Distributed Cloud, yeah. that ability to run Gemini in my data center aligns perfectly to what clients expect. Yeah, and then they got the new process with 130 miles in Vertex is interesting too. Yeah. And you got Gemini 1.5 is looking really strong. I have to tell you the story. Last year, and, I, and, and sometimes I'm baffled about my Googler and I tell him <laughs> why you make yeah. it so complicated. And I tell the TK, I was in line to do my hackathon on Ver Vertex and Bart at the time. Do I, it took me long to line up than actually build the entire system. And it's, it's crazy, it is actually very easy. The problem that we, in the tech world, we actually making it more complicated and everybody thinks <laughs> that AI is just Google and, and Microsoft. And yeah. Oh, there, Adobe does a great job yeah. for yes. anything that is text, and then SAP has a lot of AI in their system, so oh, yeah. uh, ServiceNow for, for help us. So again, yeah. it has to be a multi, environment, yeah. because the business has And it's got to be partners. simple too. I yeah, mean, yes. it's like the old a uh, enterprise joke, how do enterprise solutions uh, well, solve problems make, by making it more complex? Yes. <laughs> well, I think this no. is a remarkable thing, right, because we've moved on so much in the last year or so that we, we've got this point where Gen AI is fundamentally consumable but it's remarkably easy to build solutions yeah, yeah. on it. As a, as a general guide, I mean, we often struggle to spend more than four or five weeks building a complete solution. A really good example of one we did uh, here in the States with a healthcare provider is we now have a Gen AI enabled clinical advisor. If you're a medical professional, yeah. you're struggling to spend enough quality time with your patients, yeah. we've now enabled Gen AI to give guidance to clinicians treatment plans, other, um, other advantages. And, and this is a really good example where we leverage a technology like Gemini, we enhance it with more accurate data from the client's estate, we blend those together into a specialized solution. And if you think about some of the inherent advantages that Gen AI offers from a conversational perspective, our clinical advisor, you can ask it to perform the role of a cardiologist. You yeah. can ask it to perform yeah. the role of a diabetes specialist. Yeah. It's the same application. Right, whereas mm. medicine is so siloed in, yeah. in, in, in real life that, in, that it's, it's taking away those things. I'm curious about how your relationship with clients has changed now that as you were talking about earlier, you're finding all these new ways for them to be more productive. Are you helping them and advising them on, oh, you could make this a new source of revenue. This could be a new business model for you. Are you absolutely. advising them in those ways? Um, and Absolutely, and you know, at HCL Tech we'll be vertical, align, and domain because our engineering, if you build, you know, large scale and you know, system for a client, you need to know that, that, that client. But um, the other interesting thing is the clients themselves have, are now realizing that they have this amazing value that is their data and then they're starting up to, to, to understand, right oh, if I use it there, yeah. I can win on a competitive venture. Oh, if I yeah. use it there, I can enlarge you know, my marketing. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's phenomenal to us to see how fast yeah. they, they get on, on understanding what's the potential. Our, as well, in our strategy is though we have a very conscious, um, uh, you know, charter to create ethical um, AI yeah. and to, to be very uh, mindful of uh, the creation of IPs yeah. and to be very mindful that we are dealing with data of yeah. clients and this is, so. is, is a, is a it, we all have to govern well, and you know the European Community has put out very strong directions yeah. and everything. So we do global clients. You have yeah. to understand how to deal yeah. with the di yeah. dimension well, of. Well, also you mentioned the value, the time to value. That's a cliche in the industry. Yeah. To your POC model, you can get really quick proof points, yes. and those little wins that you do internally mm -hmm. with your data also show the boss, hey, we got momentum. Get more budget. Right, yes. so you're starting to see budgets. Dave Vellante reported on the ETR spending data that budgets now are being allocated on AI. A year yeah. ago they're being allocated, well, stolen from other budgets. Now it's like, okay, we see a little bit of wins. Budget isn't a problem know? for anyone, yeah. quite frankly. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that we've seen, right, we, we use our cloud native and AI labs uniquely yeah. as a place where our clients can come in 
for a trusted advisor type relationship. To your point, we help them understand yeah. what's going to work best for them. But it's also a place of innovation and acceleration. Yeah. But the remarkable thing that we've seen is we'll do an engagement with a client, we'll build, call it a POC, and the client then sticks to the lab thereafter, right? It's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Once the client sees value, the ideas just keep flowing. Oh, right. you know, I think, right. the, I think yeah. the, the, your product model is genius because that gets them into the discovery side of the solution, yeah. okay? And it's not your old school IT transformation playbook. Yeah. It's we're building it with you. And I think that speeds the process yeah. up. And that, that is actually, a, you're building the bridge to the future with them. And that, that's part of the engagement I think people need the most. And in Gen AI's 100% value creation, the, mm. the business lever that they yeah. want to have, we still, there is some cost reductions, but in the long run, the, the one that they really go for is exactly what you said. What, how is it going to change my mm. business? How am I going to accelerate? We, we have, as an industry, I, I don't think we have been able to capture very well yeah. the diminished cost and business value by here. Yeah. In this technology, we really need to learn how to do it for our clients. Excellent. Siki, uh, Siki now, great to have you on. We could Thank go you. for another hour. We, get, just on your, we should do a whole segment mm. on the customer mm. stories because yes. yeah. that's real data that you can share mm, with the sure. field and would get more, more motivation, get the confidence And elicit up. the best practices. Yeah, the confidence. That's what we know. Confidence yeah. is critical. Yeah. Enthusiasm, check, everyone's enthused. <laughs> confidence is a great point and we'll have to have you back on. Yeah. To, to end the segment, we'll give you both the final word. Final statement. What's the big relationship with Google? How is that helping HCL? And what's the benefits to customers? What should they know about? So um, HCL Tech was probably the first uh, partner that bet all in on, on Google Cloud when Google was still very small and, and a strong challenger. So we have a long lasting uh, relationship. There is, um, and HCL as a, at CL Tech, as engineers, we, we like to code in Java. It's a very natural <laughs> environment for us. And uh, there is a little bit of a, a geek affiliation, yes, a, yes, a yes. lot of, um, yeah. of that. And we have a very open um, relationship. We invest on the new releases and, and we do a lot of engagement in, in the market. It's, a, it's pleasant um, to work with, mm. they're a very, they, f they are challengers, so it's always fine yeah. to win yeah. as your challenger. Yeah, they have good, they have good AI too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they're, they're, this I, I told to TK. Now the the pack is getting your way. You just gotta uh, push it through because it's enterprise. Yeah. They got the right formula. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it's, it's a good point. I mean, I, th I think Google have done a particularly good job at making Gen AI consumable, now that's yeah. really important to our clients. They like that ease of consumption, yeah. Yeah. right? And clearly, you know, from a, De a Gemini perspective, all of the capability that we, we expect is there. One thing that I wouldn't want to overlook, though, is a lot of clients have got a very strong interest in open source approaches, yes, right? So the, the ancillary availability of Gemma, for example, is an open yes, source you know, model uh, approach does actually resonate really strongly with clients who favor that opportunity yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, love the AI force, love the AI labs, mm. it's a great formula, congratulations, and uh, it's just getting started. Yes. <laughs> Moving quickly. Thanks All for right. coming yeah. on the show. Thanks for Thank, you. On. Thank you guys. Yes. Thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Google Cloud Next. You are watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.